I just always viewed myself as someone who was weak and small, and I just, I just wasn't cut out to do anything physical. I want to welcome you to Humans of Business, where we go beyond a typical business video series, focusing not on the what, but the who. Today on the Humans of Business sofa, we have the wonderful Susie Ma. Susie is the founder of well-known organic skincare brand Tropic, which exploded globally with over 20 million pounds in revenue. Susie started the company at age just 15, where she'd sell her handmade products at Greenwich Market. Since then, she's appeared in The Apprentice, where she came runner-up, but that didn't stop her. Lord Sugar saw her potential and invested in her anyway. She's been featured in the Forbes 30 Under 30 list, and she's recently been hiking, climbing, and cycling all around the world with Sir Richard Branson. I met this lady recently at a female entrepreneurship dinner. She's an impeccable dress sense, beautiful makeup, obviously, and is genuinely one of the happiest, nicest humans I've ever met. I'm excited to get to know Susie more. Hi, Susie. Thank you so much for being here and chatting to me today. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, such a pleasure. <laughs> so my first question to you is I saw some advice that you gave online and it was all around doing what makes you really happy rather than chasing the money. Why is that so important to you and how have you done that? Mm, so I do think it's incredibly important to do a business that you're really and truly passionate about. Mm. I think when you're passionate about something, creativity just comes so naturally with it. Yeah. Um, I meet a lot of people who start businesses up for the wrong reasons. They just mm. want the money. They're not really interested in the product that they're delivering. And it always falls short in the future. Mm. So um, yeah, I find that really important mm. to just be passionate. What are you really passionate about? Um, so I'm really passionate about change, about mm. just being the very best that we can be. Um, so right now in my business, we have a infinite purpose as to why we do what we do. Mm. And our infinite purpose is to help create a healthier, greener and more empowered world. Wow. And I feel really passionately about that statement because it's mm. ambitious, it's so big and broad yeah. um, and it covers so many different elements. Yeah. Out of all of the millions of people on the planet, why are you here doing what you're doing? Mm, so I've been very privileged to have a very varied upbringing. Mm. Um, I, co I come from very humble beginnings. Mm. Uh, I was born in Shanghai under the one child policy in, mm. um, in China. And we didn't have much growing up. So I lived in like a, a small shed on the back of my grandparents' flat. Mm. And kind of moving from east and then I moved over to Australia and then to the UK, it really made me appreciate just all the good things in life mm. because I've been in a situation where I didn't have much yeah. and then to be presented with opportunities and things mm. that I, I wouldn't have been able to have if I still stayed in, in Shanghai, um, it just makes me feel like, you know, what, I'm, I'm so lucky to be yeah. presented with these opportunities to allow me to be where I am today. You know, all the education and my family allowing me to move from country to country and learn all these new things. I just, I just feel that other people should also be given that opportunity because if I did, why, why shouldn't other people have the same thing? Yeah, so that links back to, I guess, your, your purpose of helping creating empowered jobs, right? So That's you're giving it. these women all across the country this yeah. opportunity to run their own business. So um, you were on The Apprentice. Yes, I was. <laughs> um, and it must have been very courageous to have to put yourself into the spotlight. It was you and kind of you as a person, especially because you, you didn't have necessarily the business idea all the way through, right? No. So how did... Did you have to overcome any obstacles? How did it feel putting yourself in that limelight? And was there any kind of really challenging and vulnerable times that you had? So um, I would say that going on to The Apprentice in the first place was quite an easy decision. Mm. And the process itself was, it, it was, it was quite a shock to the system <laughs> actually. Imagine, it, it wasn't yeah. anything like how I expected. I'd never done something like that before. But it was a real eye opener. Mm. Um, on two sides, from the business side of what could be possible, because you know, we built, uh, was it 12 businesses in the, in the space mm. of 12 weeks? Yeah. It's incredible. Um, and also you meet so many different types of people from mm. all walks of life, which really opens your eyes. Um, and it can be challenging in terms of getting on with those people mm. and starting up all these businesses that you've mm. never even considered. I just really, yeah, I really love the process. It's mm. probably one of the best things I've ever done in my mm. life. Yeah. And out of the back of that, you got investment from Alan Sugar. Yes, I did. Uh, what, what's he like? Like, what's he like as a human and as a person? Because we see him on screen and but it'd be really nice to know just what he's like as a, as a person too. 
So Lord Sugar, he's yeah, got Lord. a book called What You See Is What You Get. Okay. Um, and that pretty much sums him up. Yeah. <laughs> what you okay, see is what cool. you get. He's um, He's got, there's no fluff with Lord Sugar. Yeah. He literally says what he thinks. There's mm. no filter. Yeah. Um, but he's very supportive. Yeah. And what I love about Lord Sugar is that he doesn't, um, he never dampens on my creativity. He mm. kind of just says, that's really important. If that's yeah. your idea, you know, this is your business, it's your baby, you just yeah. run with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm here if you need any guidance yeah. and advice. And that's that's exactly what a business yeah. partner should be for me. Because Tropic is my baby. I did start it when I was 15. And mm -hmm. I don't think I could be in partnership with someone who wants to get too involved yeah. into the day-to-day -day runnings. Yeah. So, that's yeah, great. he's he's great. He's supportive mm -hmm. in, in the perfect way. Yeah. Yeah. So I believe you've been doing lots of challenges recently around the globe. Yeah. With Strive Challenge, is that correct? Yes, yeah. Indeed. And that was, I believe, mentally and physically difficult. So tell yeah. us a little bit about what you were doing uh, with Sir Richard Branson. Yes. Um, and any, yeah, how, how did you have to grow as a person to do all of that physical activity? And I think you were running your business at the same time, yeah. right? It must have been challenging. Yeah. So I was, I was presented um, with the opportunity to do the Strive Challenge. Mm. Uh, at this fast track event that I was at. And you know, what was interesting was that academically, business-wise, I have done well in my life, mm -hmm. um, but physically, exercise-wise, I've always been terrible at. So mm -hmm. I was that kid at school that was always trying to, you know, pretend to be sick so that yeah, I didn't have to go on the sports well. days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, always last in like, in all the running teams, no one picked me for the yeah. basketball, you know, and the, and the netball teams yeah. that was in Australia and the UK. Yeah. And I just always viewed myself as someone who was weak and small, mm. and I just, I just wasn't cut out to mm. do anything physical. Yeah. And when I was presented with this opportunity, I just thought, you know what? Like, I talk about the fact that anything is possible. Mm. I talk about business. I talk about building yourself up and having confidence. And here I am thinking, oh, God, I could, I could never do that. I could, yeah. I could never ride a mountain bike. I could mm. never climb a mountain. I could never run. I could never walk for that long. And I just thought, well, why am I thinking those things? Mm. I need to practice what I preach yeah. and go for it. Yeah. Because really, if I really say that anything is possible, then I can do the things that the Strive mm. Challenge is is saying that I should be yeah. able to do. Wow. So I thought I'll sign up. And the first challenge that I did was uh, in 2017. That was in Marrakesh. It was two days mountain biking across the foothills of the Atlas Mountains, and then two days climbing Mount Tubkal, which wow. is the highest peak in North Africa. And then I loved it so much <laughs> <laughs> that I signed up for uh, the second Strive Challenge in 2018 as part of the core team, mm. which was a month-long expedition. Yeah where you uh, start from the southern tip of Sardinia and then you cycle, kayak, hike through Corsica all the way up to the summit of Mont Blanc. And wow. it was like 32 days straight. But it was, again, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. And it did go to show that really and truly anything is possible. Mm. And I've pushed my body to limits that I never knew <laughs> yeah, sounds was like feasible. It. And I'm growing muscles yeah. in places that I didn't know could grow muscles. So yeah, it's You're great. really inspired fantastic. because I'm that person going, you know, I can do business, I can do this, yeah. I can talk on stage, but you asked me to climb a mountain and I become like, oh, I can't do it. Yeah. So actually I'm gonna, you know what? You've really inspired me to go Let's and do something. Let's do it, Charlotte. I Let's climb a mountain together. Let's do it, I'll Let's do, do it. Let's do it. Committed, on camera, <laughs> I'll totally do it. Do it. Yeah, yeah, it's the, you know what, it's the best feeling in the world. I mean, when yeah. you're climbing the mountain, yeah. There are moments where you do feel like you're going to die. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. You know, because okay, on my block, well. we had like, I had like 20 kilograms on my back because I had all my sunscreen, my tropic oh, products. I still try yeah. to do a full facial regime <laughs> in the mountains. Mountain. I was like, still need to moisturize, protect my skin. Because um, it takes two days to summit. Yeah. So you carry all your stuff and then obviously you have the altitude sickness. So you yeah. feel a bit drunk. Wow. Pretty much the whole time. Yeah. And it is tiring. I mean, that yeah. was day 32. But I have to say, the feeling that you get when you get to the summit yeah, is, worth is it. just complete elation. It's yeah. unlike anything else. So oh. It's worth it for yeah. that feeling. Okay, let's yeah. do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. <laughs> I would love to dive into some of your keepsake yeah, items. Yeah, let's do it. Can you talk me through some of these and why they're so special and meaningful to you? Yeah. This little toy, or this little ceramic toy, um, actually belonged to my mum. Mm. So she grew up playing with this. Um, she told me that someone made it for her. Wow. Um, but she was really, really young when she got it, so she doesn't remember who made yeah. it for her. But she gave this to me when I was a little girl, and this is what I played with in Shanghai. Um, this is the only thing I took with me 
to Sydney, then I took it to Cannes, and this, this was the only thing that I then took with me to the UK. So yeah. this is the only toy that has home. followed me around my whole life, um, oh. all, all over the world. So this has real sentimental value yeah. to me. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful. cute, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's kept in, in good shape, actually. I haven't dropped it or anything, it's not even chipped. So yeah, <laughs> yeah little, that's great. I love, I love it, I love it. What Thank else you. do you have here? What's this heart? So this heart, um, this is a more recent thing. So there's a charity that we support called the Winnie Mabasso Foundation, and mm. they're in South Africa. Um, and they essentially support the elderly and orphans who's, um, who the people that they depend on have passed away from AIDS or HIV. Yeah. And we support the foundation by um, you know, helping them with the bills, the food, um, with clothing, seeds for their garden and everything. Mm. And we were in South Africa recently, and we treated the grannies to a day out um, at a safari park oh, and some great. dinner. And one of the grannies made this for me. Oh. So it's just a little heart just, yeah. to, just to connect us. And it, it's just really, really lovely yeah. just to say that they're thinking of us and that they're grateful. And I'm, I'm so grateful for them yeah. um, because they've, they've given me an extra purpose in my yeah. life and what we do. Oh, that's very special. Yeah, I so love it. Really special and Always reminding you to love first. Yeah, yeah to love, love first. Yeah, I love that heart shape. Yeah, yeah it's gorgeous. Great. Yeah. What are the papers that we have under here? The papers. Right, let's look at those. So this takes you back to the beginning of Tropic. So I have, so I started the business when I was 15. Hmm. Um, I don't have any graphics design experience, but I did design our first logo um, in Word and Paint. It yeah. looks horrific. I remember I'm, Paint. I'm cringing a little bit, <laughs> literally copy and paste in Word and Paint. Yeah. And this is my logo. So this is what I had in front oh. of my market stand. This is like the original oh. laminated yeah. paper. Like this lemonade is stand style. That's it. Yeah. So, I mean, there's so much text. No one ever read this. <laughs> but I would, so I would literally stand in front of my customers with my two laminated sheets of yeah. paper in front of me like this. And I'll be like, hello, would you like a free hand treatment with my natural body scrub? And I'll go through the ingredients. So jojoba, magadamia, vitamin E, and sweet almond. Yeah. And these are the essential oils. And then the customers would love it yeah. and buy it. And, uh, and here's a picture of me. Oh, let's have a look. At my stand when I was 15. Oh, that's incredible. At the market store. So I don't know if you can see the pages. Oh, no, just hidden. Oh, yeah, you can see the, the two like laminates that, yeah. would just been in front of that. Wow. Very really exciting. did start from a proper market store. Yeah, and look like at it an now. actual market store that in is, my mum's kitchen making yeah. the products. And, um, and this was the first ever newspaper or advertorial yeah. that we had. And this was in the independent newspaper, I think. Mm. And I just a little advert that I paid for, and I was oh, very proud great. of that. In the original logo, original jam jar packaging. Yeah. yeah, it looks really unprofessional, but look how far we've come today. Yeah, it really is amazing. I've got a couple of quick fire questions. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Instagram. The weirdest thing about you? Oh, I have double jointed fingers and shoulders. Oh, can you show me your finger? So normal people's fingers are like this. Yeah. My fingers do oh, that. Oh, you know what? They all do that. <laughs> my arms do it. Yeah, yeah. same. Look at that. Weird. It's Why weird, did we evolve it? to do this? I don't know. This isn't normal. It's not needed. This it's has never come it, helpful. It, it freaks people life. out. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we're the same. Okay. Look at yeah, that. Weird. Um, <laughs> music or podcasts? Music. Your favourite drink? Pina colada. Great one. I love that. <laughs> uh, your favourite country? Australia. Toilet paper, do you have it over or under? Over. Always over. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say under. Oh, no. Um, would you rather receive an email or a letter? A letter. Humans are social creatures. I'm happiest when? Oh, I'm happiest when I'm chilling in my bed. Yeah, I love my bed too. I love my bed. <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur because? I have a vision for the future. The legacy I want to leave behind is? That you can achieve anything. Fantastic. What a great way to end <laughs> our interview. I just have a little gift for you, oh, actually. Oh, that's so sweet, Just Charlotte. to say a big thank you um, for being on the show. You can open it now. Oh, wow. Thank yeah, you so much. Just a little much. something. That's so kind. It's nicely wrapped. <laughs> I'm going to tear into this. <laughs> so I know how much of a dreamer you are, and I'm hoping that one day I can read your book. So just a little journal oh, wow. and some motivational With my initials with on there. Initials that's on there. so sweet. Yeah, thank for you, you to so write much, your book. Thank you, darling. No, thank, thank you. you so much thank for coming. You. My nice. pleasure. Thank you so much. This is so, so <laughs> sweet. I absolutely no love it. Absolutely oh. love it.